The problem is not the sin. The problem is who is telling you you are sinning. This is the reason you hear great people or rather young or some new preachers are coming in and telling you, you should stop this, you should stop this, you should stop this. That's the law you are preaching. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not. For many times you're telling them, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. What do you think is going to happen? They'll keep doing it. Have you not tried to call your own child and say, don't do this, don't do this? Did they stop? The more you put the law, it births all kinds of lasciviousness. Meaning to say all kinds of lust. The law births lust. The moment you say don't drink, the lust rises for that drink. The Jews were never supposed to follow the law. The laws were given, over 600 of them. They were only given so that every man becomes a what? A liar, as Romans 3 told us. Therefore, by the deeds of the law. By what? By the deeds of the law. By you following, thou shalt, thou shalt not. By the deeds of the law. No flesh shall be justified in his sight. Therefore, by the deeds of the law... There shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. That means without the law, we would not know there would not be sin. Romans 7, verse number 8. But sin, taking occasion by the commandments. Sin can only be powerful when there is a commandment that says you should not do it. Uh -uh. Without don't do this, sin is no power. Ah. Uh. No, watch this. But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all men of concupiscence. The word concupiscence is like lust. For without the law, sin is dead. Hear me? Okay? Pastor, come here, stand here. All right? So we have, since you are wearing black, you are seen today. Now you are the what? Stand there, stand here. You are the, the law. All right? Come here. So you are the one moving. The moment you grab him, hold here. The moment a Christian holds on to the law, sin is alive. Let's read again. But sin only takes its power from the commandment you should not do it. The moment you tell your child, don't go to the club. They won't go. They will close the door, lock it by the window. Wait, you think they are being disobedient. No, you gave them the power to sin. The moment you introduce the law, you have introduced power to sin. He's holding on to the law. So sin is what? Is active against him. But the moment he says the law should go, you say, the, he goes as the law. The law should go. What happens? Sin also is dead. So sin only exists when you have a law. So now the Bible says Christ came to abolish the law. So is there a sin now? No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just mathematics. What is left in the church is consciousness of sin. You only sin when you are conscious of it. Hear me, hear me well. The Bible says they caught a woman in adultery, whether she was on top of... Uh, now, they caught her where? In adultery. And the Bible says they were witnesses. They saw it. They pulled her from underneath. Say, so let's go to Jesus. Drag her like this. Let's go to Jesus. When they got to Jesus... Jesus, not notice what the Bible says. And they saw Jesus. Jesus looks at them and says, Whosoever has no sin. Notice, not sins, but sin. These were religious Jews of the Sanhedrin. Are you, are you getting this? He that is without what? Sin, John 8, 7. Not sins. He was specifically asking the sin of adultery. Hi, hi, hi. Then the archbishop.
He without sin cast the first stone. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Your problem is you don't know what he wrote, but I know it. Because the scriptures are silent about it. But understand when Moses got the writing of the law in the first part, it was the law that God wrote with his finger. And Moses broke those laws and went back and wrote them copying God's handwriting. So whose writing was he copying? Jesus' handwriting. Now when the Jews who keep the tablets saw the handwriting, they realized this one. The handwriting is exactly what we see. You're, you're missing that one, but you'll get it in a few minutes. For they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning with the elders. The word elders there, it is the word Sanhedrin. It means the people that rule in the churches, the, the, the writers, the authors of the laws. The big one, the big bishop is the first to go. He looked at Jesus. Cast the first one. He's like, uh, <laughs> if I don't have a sin. You mean like I don't have a sin and you just, your handwriting is like God. You might actually be Jesus, God himself. The Bible says the big bishop, the archbishop. And the bishop said, ah, the man of God is going. The bishop followed <laughs> The assistant bishop said, ah, I'll be left alone here. And what did he do? He left again. Every one of them, there were 71 in the Sanhedrin. All of them left. Notice the words of Jesus and notice the contrast. They said the woman was caught in the very act of adultery. So who are these people? Witnesses. Yeah, Jesus. And Jesus said to the woman, where are your accusers? These are not accusers. They are witnesses. Sir, if you are going to take my sin that I committed yesterday or today and drag it to Jesus, you become an accuser. You do not witness it. No, you are not getting what I'm trying to say. You are, you are not getting the good news I'm preaching now. This is the good news we are preaching. When we say we preach the good news, this is freedom. Freedom. 